Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Dirt. Um, today I'm going to talk about two ingredients that are, I feel like, most commonly used for one of the most important things in our soil, and that is drainage. Um, we need, you know, no matter the plant or the soil, you need good drainage aeration, and I feel like these are two of the most utilized ingredients to create that in our soils and that is pumice and perlite. And I'm also gonna talk about charcoal in today's episode, and it ties in to the pumice, so that's why I chose to do it um, in today's episode as well, and it also helps with aeration um, and drainage too. So, um, first, you get a lot of questions about which of these you prefer, or which one's better, and honestly, from all the research I've done, Prior to even researching for the series, just for my own um, pots and soil mixtures, um, it really seems like it boils down to availability and preference. So they both do similar or almost exactly the same thing. They improve aeration in your soil, they help with drainage, um, they help wick away the water and hold it in um, to the ingredient itself, not the dirt, so that it doesn't suffocate the roots because your plant roots need aeration and oxygen to breathe or else they get root rot and all kinds of other problems. So um, that's why I say no matter what plant, what soil, you know, everything, they need good drainage across the board. So um, these I are two things that I'll mix into every single medium that I make. Um, now, the difference between them, like I said, is a lot of its preference. Um, perlite is cheaper, generally, and more easily available. Um, pumice can be more difficult to get a hold of and can be more costly. For me, where I'm at here, it's not. It's very easy for me to get a hold of and it's worth the cost difference for a few reasons of why I prefer it. Um, first, I'll talk about what exactly they are. So they are both an organic ingredient. Um, the difference is that uh, perlite is volcanic siliceous rock that they take and they heat it to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit until it kind of pops, like popcorn almost, and it becomes 13 times its original size, which results in this um, very fluffy, almost styrofoam ball-like that really is what it reminds me of. And this is what you'll generally find in almost every pre-made mix. The little white chunky flakes, um, it really is used a lot in everything. So um, that's what that is. And then pumice, this is um, when air gets trapped in lava and then it cools before the air can escape. It creates this naturally very light, um, porous, air-filled rock. Um, and the only thing that is done to this, the only manufacturing, is that they sort it for size. So that's the difference. Where this one, it is technically an organic ingredient, but they process it by heating it um, and stuff like that. Where this is just, they mine it, sort it, and that's what it is. Um, so with that, perlite is sterile. Um, it is completely sterile. Pumice can contain um, microbes and microorganisms but those are not always bad. Um, there's a chance there could be, but generally um, they're not a bad thing, but they are present. So I have noticed like uh, soil mites in some of my pumice, but again, those are not a harmful thing. They are more annoying than anything. And I've noticed that all I really had to do was um, cut back on the watering a little bit and then they kind of just disappeared. So it's, you know, from what I've researched, soil mites don't harm the plants at all. Um, they're just natural decomposers. Um, but I have found that they have come in a couple bags of my pumice. Don't let that scare you away. Um, if you look at manufacturers, you can always rinse and clean the pumice if that worries you. I'm not bothered by beneficial bugs. I like springtails for the same reason. So don't let that frighten you. It's just Again, saying that it isn't completely sterile where our perlite is sterile. Um, another big difference is that pumice will never decompose. Like it is what it is. It's gonna stay mixed into your medium where perlite will eventually float to the top, top sorry, and can decompose as well. So 
it's not fast, probably never in the lifetime of you, the plant in that soil mixture before you pot it up, hopefully. Um, but it will, and I've noticed this in mine, it does float to the top after watering so it doesn't stay incorporated giving you the drainage constantly the way that pumice does. So that's why, another reason I've switched to pumice, I feel like it creates better aeration because it's bigger pieces and it also just stays incorporated in the mixture as well. Um, so I never have to worry about it again. Um, two, they both, um, you know, help wick away water and keep it available for the plant, but without suffocating the roots, because that's a very important thing with drainage. Your roots need to breathe, they need oxygen. Um, so they're both very good for that. Um, really, before this series, I did a ton of research, um, or before I even planned the series, just when I was doing my own mixtures. And then again, for this, I researched even deeper and couldn't really come out with more than it was just personal preference and availability. So both are very good ingredients. Some people use both in their mixtures. Um, you don't have to be mutually exclusive like one or the other. Obviously I have both. Um, it's really, I feel like, preference. Um, this does have, I, you know, I'm a big environmental person, but I also want to research more into this. Someone had asked um, that this has more environmental effects. And while I would assume that's the case because they do um, process it more than just mining it, um, I do want to research that more before I put that information out there because I don't know exactly for sure. Um, my husband is getting his degree in environmental science, so I'm going to ask you know, his help on that too, and I'll get into that more and I'll let you guys know as soon as I know more information about that. But um, as far as that goes, that's kind of it for these two. So what brings charcoal into the play is that if you are using pumice, you want to use charcoal as well. That said, you want to use charcoal anyway. I think it is a very important ingredient to put into your soils. So whether you use either one, I would suggest using charcoal anyway. However, if you do use pumice, it can, not will, but can throw off the pH of your soil. And charcoal is a natural pH regulator for your soil. So adding the two negates that, um, and then you're fine. So moving on to the other properties of charcoal, because it is awesome. And like I said, regardless if you use pumice, or perlite, I suggest using charcoal. And I'll, I use it in all my mixes, no matter what I'm planting. Um, that's why, you know, I kind of did these three together too because they're big for drainage and aeration and I put them in everything. Doesn't matter what I'm mixing for, I put these in there. So uh, charcoal is known as nature's soil conditioner. It's gonna pull out any, you know, salts, any chemicals, um, it, it's really good at just cleaning your soil of things that shouldn't be there. Um, it absorbs it, it absorbs any smells, um, it can help with any, you know, it helps with water retention, again, and aeration. Um, you, the, the thing you need to be sure though is that it's pure charcoal, not um, aquarium or barbecue charcoal. There is a difference from what I researched. Those contain other chemicals where horticulture charcoal is charcoal in its purest form and that's what you want. You don't want to add anything else, any other chemicals into your soil and it won't have as much of the benefits as pure charcoal does. So um, it helps to remove salt um, for people who use you know tap water that can have a lot of salt and build up in the soil and um, it will help remove that. Uh, it promotes beneficial bacteria, and it also helps fertilizers be more absorbable by your plants. So if you're using, I mean, worm castings are rarely available for plants and that's what I use a lot, um, as I talked about in my last video. But other fertilizers that you're using, this will make it so your plant can utilize those more efficiently. Um, so it really, I feel it's just a really great product. Um, it's Basically, it's organic, it's carbon, um, and just, it's really dirty. 
so beware of that good thing I'm in a black shirt but you know these three ingredients I highly recommend you use in your mixtures in whatever you're using I really like them I have seen nothing but good results and charcoal is one um, for the ones that I hadn't already put in the mixture um, but they weren't ready to repot so in specifically my fiddle leaf fig my big one it doesn't love to be repotted it didn't need to be repotted but I didn't have charcoal in its mixture so what you can do is just mix some in to the top one fourth of the soil and it's going to help um, with all of those things so it's not something that you you know can't utilize in stuff that's already potted which I also really like so hopefully that answered your guys' questions on those three ingredients um, they're three of my favorites and I feel like the most important to use in your plants and your potting soil I'm gonna stop talking because I'm getting all jumbly but I appreciate you guys watching this is longer than I expected it to be but I just talk a lot can't help it so <laughs> there's a lot of information I want you guys to have it all so um, if you have any questions let me know I'd be happy to either you know research it more or look into it um, but yeah happy planting and we'll see you guys next time thanks